Why, hello, and welcome to the back garden yard. And I don't want you to be this guy. Just don't do it. Don't be this guy. Planting squash seeds at the very first of March. Or actually, if you're in zone 7 or less, you don't want to plant squash seeds until the end of March. So, don't be that guy. It is a cold, rainy day, March 1st, 2024 right here in Georgia and I'm going to talk about garden theory today and what you should do in March and what you should not do in March so it's a nice day to go inside take my time and we're going to talk about 10 things that you should do and not do in the month of March in zone 7 So the first thing we're going to talk about is don't rush the season. The soil is cold. So if you're in zone 7 or less, you've got cold soil and only cold weather crops are going to grow. So don't go ahead and plant your squash, your cucumbers, your other hot season plants, okra, just don't plant them. Don't get them started. What will happen is they will grow up. They'll get very leggy and weak. They'll get root bound. And when you put them into the ground, then finally in May, what will end up happening is you're going to have a plant that's going to be severely stressed. And if you had gone out and just planted seeds in the ground, you'll probably get a better healthier plant quicker than you will and you will have done all that work to try to keep them alive so gardening is supposed to be fun it's a hobby you should like to do it so do not get yourself all stressed out by watching the youtube gardening channel you'll see these guys they're growing hundreds of plants in their greenhouse they've got thousand dollar grow light systems air conditioning heating you don't need all that what we're doing in the back garden yard is just having a nice crop of vegetables to eat and we're doing it as a leisurely hobby so do not get yourself stressed out trying to get your plants planted and get them harvested it is not a competition so don't make it seem like it's a competition there's no deadlines if you don't put seeds in the ground until the middle of may you're still going to have a nice garden so just keep that in mind and don't rush the season okay number two so do make a map of your garden space and plan where everything will grow now that sounds pretty uh, straightforward but you'd be surprised and i do it i'm guilty of it if anybody saw my videos last year i had a couple extra plants so i just stuck them in here and there if you'll make a map and i made a map last year and your map will not always be in the end like it's designed but it is certainly going to help you so draw it out uh, just get a piece of paper draw your garden and then draw the rows put where you're going to put a trellis or a fence up for things like cucumbers to run and then go buy your seeds or plants whatever you want to plant and then you'll know exactly what you're going to plant. Now, the best laid plans do change, especially with a gardener. You're going to see something else that you want to plant 
somebody's going to give you a plant for your garden and you're going to have to find a place for it. So the best advice I can get is not to plant everything in your garden and leave some extra room. Okay, number three. So don't go buy seeds and plants until you know where you're going to plant them. Now that sounds fairly basic also, but you'd be surprised at how many people just go out and buy some plants and buy some seeds and they bring them home. They don't have any idea where they're going to plant them. Oh, I'll find a place. Well, that's going to end up, uh, you're, you can mess up very easy. What if you go ahead and you put your cucumber plants in a place and you don't have a trellis for them? Well, now you're going to be trying to bring a trellis in and not hurt your plants. Uh, what if you go ahead and put your tomato plants up and they're right next to your pumpkin plants and your pumpkins start climbing on your tomato trellises? So you have to think about this and what you're going to plant and how much room they're going to take. So go ahead and get your garden plan made and then buy your seeds and plants that you want to put in it. Number four, do plow your garden. Go ahead as soon as it's dry enough to get the rototiller in there. Go ahead and till it up. And if you're going to add any amendments, say you did a soil test and you want to raise or lower the pH with, say, lime or ironite, then go ahead and get that in uh, as soon as possible because you want to have a chance for that to settle into the soil and combine and you don't want to put plants into a freshly limed area it could burn the roots and stuff so go ahead and get that ready as soon as possible in early March number five don't plow the soil until it's dry or it'll be heavy and lumpy Heavy and lumpy soil, you cannot work it. If you put seeds in it, they won't come up very well. So what you want to do is let the garden dry out enough so that when you plow it, it comes up nice and fluffy. And if you've got nice, light, fluffy soil, you've got the right kind of soil then to work, make your rows, and plant your seeds. Number six. Do install your trellis or fences where your garden map that you drew shows climbing or tying vegetables will be. Do this before you plant anything in your garden. It's amazing how hard it is to bring in your fence or your trellis after your plants are up and then you're going to have to worry about damaging those plants or the plants around it. So go ahead while you've got all this empty room and get that fence or trellis up now. Do prepare your seed starting mix and containers. I'm talking about the little peat pots or other pots that you're going to start plants in. Go ahead and get your seed starting mix and your grow mix get those all ready and get them into containers and store them somewhere dry so that as soon as you are ready to plant your seeds then you want to go ahead and uh, have those ready and it's going to make it so much of a fun operation versus having to do all of the soil mixtures and the seeds that's going to be a lot of work. So go ahead and get ready before the season really gets started and prepare those containers and the seed starting mix. I like to screen my seed starting mix. I make my own out of uh, compost and some different soil I've bought and then also use garden soil. But screen it so that it's nice and fine and fluffy that way, when you put the little seeds in, they can come up through it. Number eight, 
Don't start your fast-growing plant seeds inside. They will get root-bound and leggy. The, if you want to start them in peat pots, then wait until you would normally plant them outside, put them in those peat pots, and as soon as they come up, within a couple of days, be ready to put them into the ground. And the reason I say that is they grow their roots all the way to the bottom of those pots in about a day or two. And you don't want them to get stressed and get tall and start reaching for the sky. And you've seen them if you've ever gone to uh, Walmart or Home Depot and you've seen the, say, squash plants that they've had for, say, a month, month and a half. Nobody bought them. Now they're all tall and falling over. And they're just really no good. So don't start those fast growing plants in March. Just don't start them. Uh, there's no need to. You're not going to get a crop any faster. Uh, you really probably want to wait until you've had 80 degree days for three or four days. And the forecast is for no lower than mid 70s for the next three or four days. And then that would be sometime in mid to late April for zone seven, or it's not too late to wait until the first week in May. So don't get in a hurry to plant those fast growing plants because until it gets hot, they're just going to sit there in the ground. The seeds are going to take a long time to come up, but once the soil gets warm, everything's going to happen really fast. So be patient. Number nine, do start your slow growing veggies like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. And you can go ahead and start those in March if you like. Uh, like to go ahead by the middle of March and plant the seeds. And I plant them in larger containers in those little peat pots. And the reason is, if you put them in a peat pot, then you're going to have to transplant them into a larger container anyway. So go ahead and start them in a larger container, and then you're saving the stress to the plant of having to transfer it twice. And that's my advice on slow-growing veggies. And number 10, this is the one you've been waiting for. Do plant your cool weather vegetables, your lettuce, snow peas, bok choy, carrots, things you know grow well in a cooler temperature. It's time to plant those in March. You can plant them anytime in March. You can go ahead and plant them tomorrow if you've got a nice space already plowed up and picked out for them. Make sure that you've got your garden map made so you know where you want to put these but go ahead and get them in the ground you shouldn't put lettuce and snow peas and bok choy and carrots in containers for transplanting just plant them directly into the ground because they don't transplant very well and plus it's all that extra work for nothing so i hope you have enjoyed this video I hope it's helpful to you and we're going to go ahead and start doing various planting videos and I'm going to show you how to put a trellis up the easy way in coming videos. So please like and subscribe because we've got a nice garden coming this year in 2024. Thank you for watching.